Welcome to my third video discussing Crossfire, the company level World War II rules for tabletop wargaming. I'm afraid it's tipping down with rain outside so there might be a bit of background noise as it hammers on the roof and I apologise for that but there's not much I can do about it. In this video I'm going to discuss movement and enemy reactive fire. In Crossfire if you're the active player and you have the initiative you can move any of your units as often as you like until the enemy stops you by using reactive fire. The rules state that to move you pivot to face the direction you want to go and then you move forward in a straight line. The straight line is pretty important and you stop either when you want to or when you reach a piece of terrain whichever comes first. The reality during the game is you go, well, I'm moving these here. And and that suffices. So my British squad want to enter this building here. Um, and it's my go, so they're going to move. The first move they make, they get this far. And they get stopped by the fence because it's a bit of terrain. But I've still got the initiative, so I can carry on. So their next move will be to cross the fence with a linear obstacle like fences or hedges. The only move you can do is just to cross them. And their last move, because again, no one's stopping me, is they will get into the building. Um, all well and good. If the fence wasn't there, it would just be a single move to get to the building. Because there's no intervening terrain, I can move them as far as the next piece of terrain and they can enter it. There they are. And they're safely in the building. If I wanted to, I could stop them in the middle. Um, nothing says I have to go as far as the terrain. They could move from the forest, they could stop there. But then, of course, they'd be in the open uh, and not have the benefit of any cover. That's all well and good. When there's no enemy around, you can wander about to your heart's content in perfect safety. But now there's a German machine gun in the building and my British squad still wants to reach the building on the far side of the clearing and they decide they're going to go for it. Every time you move in crossfire and the enemy can see you, they can try and shoot you. They can shoot you in any of the three ways we discussed in the shooting video. A single squad can shoot you. You can do a group shooting move if, there's, um, if there were two squads in the building. The machine gun could, could team up with a rifle squad, say. And if you're really unlucky, they can get a crossfire on you and, um, and a lot of bullets will be coming your way. So I begin my move, I say I'm going to this building, and my German opponent goes, no, no, in the middle I'm going to shoot you. So I stop where he wants to shoot me. He can shoot me at any point in my move, but obviously at the beginning I'm in cover, and at the end I'll be in cover, so he picks um, when I'm in the open, obviously. Uh, and he shoots in the usual way. He rolls his dice. A machine gun rolls four dice when it shoots, um, unlike a rifle squad that only rolls three. So it can get, again, four results. I'm going to start with the best result for the Germans and the worst result for me. Um, three or more hits, uh, every five or six is a, is a hit, remember. Uh, three or more hits will, will destroy my squad and it goes. And uh, the Germans also will take the initiative. Two hits will suppress me. I'll get suppression marker. So I can't move or shoot. And once again, the Germans will take the initiative away from me. This means, of course, it's then their go. And they've got a machine gun looking at a, an already suppressed squad in the open. Um, and that squad's probably not going to last very long. A single hit will pin me. But it's not enough for the Germans to take the initiative. Um, all, but having said that, of course, my squad can't move. It could choose to shoot at the Germans, but at the moment it's pinned. The worst result for the German player is to miss completely. Not only does my squad get to complete its move, it'll get to the building unscathed, but because the machine gun failed to hit me at all, it receives uh, a no fire marker. I'm going to use this little ammo box. Um, it's not World War II ammo box, but it shows up. So you put that next to the unit. 
this German unit now cannot shoot again until the German player gets the initiative. This means if I had other British squads in the woods, they could run across that gap unmolested and join their friends in the building. The no fire rule is a game mechanic. There's no real justification for it in, in reality. Um, you can come up with many reasons, you know, maybe they gun did jam, maybe they're out of ammo, maybe, maybe. Uh, the point is in crossfire, if you attempt something and you fail, you get penalized and the penalty is that you lose the initiative. Now, players who are reactive firing don't have the initiative. So their penalty is that they then can't do any more reaction fire um, for the remainder of the active player's turn. Now, much like with shooting, I don't just have to move one squad. I can declare a group move. So any squads um, and officers from the same platoon that are next to each other or in the same bit of terrain um, can declare a group move and they will move one at a time um, suffering any um, reaction fire necessary and uh, the initiative won't swap until the, they've all moved. So let's try this. Um, okay so I move one squad out and the machine gun shoots at it in the open. It scores a single hit and it pins it so this squad can't complete its move but the initiative is still mine because they didn't get a suppression. I move my second squad they get stopped in the middle by the Germans. The Germans shoot again. This time the Germans miss completely. They immediately get a no fire counter. My troops finish their move and make it to the building. That machine gun is now effectively neutralized. My third squad can come out, can't be shot at, and it will get to the building as well. And because no suppressions were scored, I'll retain the initiative. And that's pretty much all there is to moving. You can move singly or you can move as a group and you go from terrain piece to terrain piece to terrain piece until you're stopped. There are a couple of special moves, however. The first one I want to talk about is going prone. The active player can choose um, a squad or squads that are in the open and get them to go prone. You go prone, you get the benefit of cover in the open. So here's the scenario. I've got this uh, squad in the open. They've been pinned by the machine gun, but a pin doesn't take the initiative, so it's still my go. What do I want to do with them? Well, the first thing I'd want to do is um, I'm going to rally them. I'll cover rallying in the next video. So we'll just assume the rally was successful, and now they're unpinned and they're ready to move. But if they move towards the building, they're going to be machine gunned again because that's a move and the Germans can react. Instead, I decide that they're going to go prone. Going prone does not attract reactive fire, so they won't be shot at. Now, you can use a prone figure next to them to show this. Um, I put a little bush down to show they found some cover in the middle of nowhere. So that unit's prone. And if they do get shot at, they get the benefit of cover, so the machine gun would drop a dice and, and shoot at them with three dice, which is still nasty, but not as bad as four dice. The problem with going prone is before you can move again, you have to stand up. Standing up is a move action. It's a move action that does draw reactive fire. So as they stood up, the machine gun could shoot at them. And then if they moved, if, if I guess maybe it missed them, they could move off again. But it does leave you vulnerable to, to multiple shots. The other special move is known as a retreat move. Again, this can be a single squad or it can be multiple squads in the same piece of terrain. And it works like this. Uh, my British aren't happy that the machine gun's there. It's causing them some pro problems. So they decide to do something about it. So we call in a tank. Up rolls the Matilda and it'll probably shoot at the Germans. But for purposes of this, it'll miss. Okay, so um, I've missed. I've lost the initiative. It's now the Germans go. The German player is in imminent danger of losing a, a valuable machine gun squad. If he just starts to move, then the um, Matilda can fire again. It can do a reaction shot just like any other unit. And, um, you know, that's not a good thing. But if the German declares a retreat move, no one can shoot at him until he leaves the 
piece of terrain he's in. So he has to move directly backwards and he's safe from being shot at until he leaves the terrain. Of course, once he's left the terrain and he's behind it, he can't be seen because you can't see through the terrain. So he's safe and he can then scuttle off and redeploy somewhere else. As with all moves, a retreat move can be a single squad or it can be multiple squads in the same bit of terrain. And that's really all there is to it. So just to recap, you can move singly or as a group and you move to the next piece of terrain in a straight line. Uh, each time you move, you can be shot at once by as many of the Germans who are able to um, see you and, and get a bead on you. Um, and that's it. And that is really the core mechanic of Crossfire. This is where the friction occurs. It is you trying to move into position and being stopped by the enemy, which pretty much mirrors real life, uh, in my mind. Um, that's the important um, consideration. So all the moves you do at the back just happen. That's fine. Uh, so you can swing your troops from one flank to the other, but as soon as you start getting inside to the enemy, things start getting dicey and the initiative starts to swap backwards and forwards quite rapidly. Um, and that is what gives the game its excitement. Um, and again, with no measuring, um, the moves are very quick. The time the game takes is thinking time as the players are deciding what's the best action to take. Next time I'm going to cover rallying and close combat. Um, and then we're nearly done. Uh, there'll be one more video after that, I think, on um, tanks and uh, artillery and off-board barrages and stuff. And we're probably done. And then I'm hoping to um, film a game in progress. So please join me for that one.